Right then, you lovely lot. So, following on from Jamie's very instructional carp, shallow one, we thought we could go down the F1 route this time, Jay. Yeah, a bit more. Because we, we, we kept touching on it, didn't we? During the, well, I kept touching on it. Like, the difference between this and that, this fishing and sort of like F1 fishing is this and that. Yeah, well, it's something that proper evolves as well, doesn't it? We've done this before at Moncall when we covered a we have various subjects. I, that was more sort of like jiggering, like overshotting or wasn't it? You did that. Oh, and you did the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway... But again, because I know everyone's different and everyone fishes a little bit different as well, don't they? Everyone uses different floats, but the fundamentals stay the same. Yeah, I like Short that. Short bits of line. Let's have a chat about that, because it's mad, isn't it, that every venue has different rigs that are better and different yes. days, different rigs are better. It's such a weird... And every venue is different in the, the ruling aspect, Jay, which we've got to touch upon, obviously. Yeah. A lot of fishers we go to will have lash length, you know, six inches, 12 inches. We'll talk about that when you go to rigs, but yeah, right, okay. it's using the right rigs. I'm getting myself again, am I? Yes, we're going to go into that in a minute. <laughs> but it's using the right rigs yeah. for the rules as well as what's right on the day. Yeah. It's a, you write a book on this, couldn't you? Oh, it's... Which we may be doing. But anyway... <laughs> <laughs> Jamie! Do you like that? That was very, it. very professional, that, <laughs> I like that it? too, lad. Anyway. Oh, you just dropped it. It's like a mic drop, but you dropped it in there. There you go. But yeah, so obviously, I'm going to go through each of the four rigs, and Jamie's got another one, uh, just to show you the, the things that you're looking for to, to like swap over, because they might not necessarily be right on the day, but I want to go through them all with you. Yeah, I like that. Different presentation. Shall I just go on in? Right, so first one rigs at me. is probably my favourite one in the old wide world. You, you'll know this, this kind of setup for me from like years gone by when uh, ever since i used to use i used to use preston chiantes and you probably went through like three or four in a session yeah they went, did, oh did. sorry mate we're keeping you up have you seen him before it's blooming out i'm boring him already yeah, not. I'm just it's tired. my turn jay come on, Go on give me the light so yeah i used to use like little baby preston chiantes that took no more than sort of two number 11s and that's where these have evolved from basically uh so it's a little baby uh three number 11 float nathan lum float um Glass or carbon stem wouldn't really matter. It's the fact that it's falling through the water nice and slow, so it's following your bait through. Mm. Now, this will oh, I'll always start off on this one, folks. Uh, just, uh, it's more of a checker. I call it a checker float to see where they are in the water. It's a sexy rig, isn't it? The one that sinks nice. It's nice. You get bites on this, but you have lots of problems on you this You have rig. issues with hitting them. Uh, potentially foul looking them as well if they want to come shallow just without it shotted. But it's, it's a lovely rig. You can use it as a little bit of a babby mugging rig as well, if you like, if the fish aren't really spooky, in the fact that it's falling through nice and slow. But ultimately, it's more so for... It's not a rig that I'll stay on all session. I'll, I'll start off on it, see what's happening, catch a few quick fish on it, the daft fish, probably me, I'd be one of these fish, just to see where they are, and then you're going for more sort of like um, direct rigs, more positive uh, rigs. Yeah, I'd say that is the basic shallow rig, but it has so many faults to it, doesn't it? Yes. I mean, Which not being a knob, knob uh, definitely. they have so many problems, but it, yeah, that's how you need to start things. But maybe not, maybe you can start in a different way with that more refined Yeah. to make things better, can't you? But that is a basic starting rig for everyone. With, with that float, would you dick about with that float, with, change it at all with bristles or anything like that, that style of float? I'd like that for pellets, but I'd want something more delicate for maggots. I don't know, it's... Uh... I know what you mean, like out, a, with a finer bristle, like a solid bristle or something like, like that. Like your or... chanty was a bit more sensitive than them, wasn't it? I yeah. think they're great for pellets. I'd want something a bit more delicate for maggots. Like yeah, a, I know what you I mean. Like I like Mitchell Wilson's yeah, 3B8s. I've I'd, got one. I do use these for, for maggots as well. Um, it's just about like, fall. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. mean. But anyway, that's irrelevant. But yeah. So, I mean, basically on all of them, folks, line stays the same. It's point eighteen line on, on everything. Uh, back shots as well. I've got a number eight just above the float there, just to keep it nice and tight. Um, and stots. I think stots is one where a lot of anglers slip up on in the fact that they're using shots and not stots on the shallow rigs. Every time that you move depth, you want that to move. Plus, it's not as harsh on your line when you're yeah, netting man. fish. You're having them move. It makes a vase sound, doesn't it? Yeah. It does. It does definitely. Yeah, I never use shot my shallow rigs. No, I don't Ever think, do you? No, definitely not. It's just every time you move it, it's marking your line or, you know, when you're netting fish, because yeah. it's really shallow, it's going to be moving your shots as well. Yeah. And it can ping off, you know, a lot under a lot of tension yeah. cutting on the thick line. Definitely, definitely stops us. Uh, hook lengths as well, you know, this, these, uh, I've got two inches on a couple of these. That definitely makes a difference that to me. That is babby hook clamp. Proper little babby one, two inches. I've, mittens like these, that's right, not I'm even one of yours, Jay. I'm proper I've impressed. done that myself and everything, folks, promise. Uh, so yeah, two inch up lens, just so it's keeping everything nice and stiff and you'll see it's the same distance, everything. I want to maintain that all the time. Obviously, when I put that float deeper though, these are going to get moved up as well. Oh yeah, you keep them proportional. Yeah, nice. just, yeah, I do, Jay. I'm like, I'm right technical with it. That might be I mean? on the quiet without you letting, that might be the most technical, poshest rig I've ever seen you do. 
you, it's, you've been, it's been baffled for me with the two at Juckleb. I never thought there was one of them in your box even. Mate, I think that might be the last one. So I hope, <laughs> I hope the band don't break off in the net. Uh, but yeah, so this this one, folks, this is me me, me go to one. Obviously, elastic. That's one of them. You can write a book on that, depending on you know the size of F1s, the size of fish, and everything. Yeah. These are you know the sort of averaging a pound the F1s in here. So I'm using the 11 Jura, which lovely. Uh, the other thing we'll touch on when we're fishing is the short kits, Jay, and the short freezing. Just go hand in hand with shallow fishing. It's F1s, just you, anything you can do to stiffen your rig up, you've got to do it. Mm. So that's my go-to one. That's what we're starting off on. Yeah. Uh, so we'll catch a few on that. As I say, you always get the odd like little baby daft one, don't you? You know. When it comes to that rig. Yeah. Slow, folly, sexy rig. Yeah. So you've got a big length of line here? Yes. Big, big, big length of line. Would you ever... Right. What, what am I going to go with explaining this? How, how do we want to go before we come into I know, that? So, yeah, I'm, I'm one for setting sort of two, three, four top kits up at different depths as long if there's limits with this. So I'll go to my limits. So every float will be at like six inches. What it if, might be if, a different depth. If you're at a fishery that said six inch lash limit, I'd, I'd stick you'd it have that. that at six. And then I'd have different rigs for different depths. And you'd depths. have more of oh. these rigs. Yes. Would you? That'd be the rig that you had a few of. Definitely. Yeah, I like that. That's your sexy rig. Because I know I'm going to catch inch. more than this. I might miss the odd bite, but that's obviously determined on the depth that you're fishing more than anything. Rather than going in straight in like the inline dibber that I'll show you next, it just gets straight in, gets job done potentially. But on some days you won't catch on that. Do you want this one as it falling through natural? Yeah, the watch, the how so it that's looks. That's the only difference. That's why I've got a back set on this one, just because you know I want to change around with that and it's keeping that line tight. But at fisheries where there can be a blooming nuisance and obviously hard to hit, you you stick to that six inch every time. But have different top kits set up at different depths. Mm. I'm making sense. Yeah, yeah, a lot. That's what I was. Yeah. You put that lovely. Go ahead. Go right, on. so the rigs when problems from that occurring. one. So when we like start missing a few on that and you know foul looking and missing bites and everything, that's when you come onto this one. So pretty much set up this go ahead. The problem with that rig then, go ahead. The one that you was just showing us, and the reason you have to because it sinks so sexy, yeah, yeah. It's because you've got that slack in it. That yes. is why the problems occur. <laughs> Sucking it in, spitting oh, out man. them little dinks that you'll get on the job because you want to all maintain that tight line when you're like either slapping it over or laying it in. Usually, slapping it over for F1s is maintaining that tight line. You'll see them little dinks as you floats at that angle, and that's them sucking it in, the, spitting it out. Yeah, the ones we blame as roach. They They're never not. are. Man, I was watching them, at, it was when I won Fish Show, when I qualified Fish Show at Clay West. Bit Western. Yeah, yeah. I'm fishing that deep on my oh, mugging rig with maggots, and I'm watching these F1s whizzing, my float settled straight in, and because it's slack, that little last bit slack because I was trying to mug him. Every single F1 sucks it, spits it, my float never moves. Really? Horrible. And they're that's this how big. Quick they were. They're so quick, aren't they? And that's what's happening when yeah. you can't see them. When you're getting the little. Yeah, 10 F1s have had that spat it. Yeah. Aren't they? They're, they're absolutely so nightmare. clever. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it's one of them. As I say, so when we start missing bites, far looking, that's when we come onto this little beauty. Inline dibber. When you get this one going, folks, it, it's phenomenal. You can do a big weight in a short space of time. But. They, they, they never seem to last with you on it. Uh, you'll get a few, then they'll wise up, and then you've got to go usually back to that one. That's, I mean, I'm talking now if you've got to use faults, so we'll come onto different rigs in a sec. Yeah. Uh, but again, you know, that, that business, you know, nice short bit of line. With an inline dibber, you're more direct to the fish rather than using a dibber with like a, a side eye. So what I want to do is slap the rig over two or three times, but have my pole tip right over my float so the it's fish can tight. potentially hook themselves. Now, you, you're catching the fish on this rig. I'm going to get it out of there so you can see it. Basically, you're only leaving it in. But with that one, I'm going to leave it sort of eight to ten seconds as it's falling through the water once it's settled. With this one, it's probably only five to six seconds. Basically, slapping it over, that goes straight down. It's this bit here. That's when you're getting the fish, is that's falling through nice and natural. Obviously, once it's settled, it's redundant. So that's when you're slapping it over again. It's that bit there when you're... How, how many times do you, do you hook them, Jay, when you go to like, lift the rig out and there's one on? You've got it in the mouth you didn't know. Yeah. That's the horrible. They are, they're definitely, yeah, they're, they're a nightmare. so quick at ejecting your bait as well. That yeah. is the carnage rig, in it? That's yeah. when Gets lots of fish in your peg, really high in the water when they come right up. I'll tell you what that is as well. That's your cover rig. And when you're going against things. Yeah, That definitely. rig's always better, Which is what we're going to do. Because what, it, that's changed for me as well. Again, we could talk about that in respect that uh, snake lakes, I always used to fish for F1s. I mean, it can be right sometimes. Days like this where it's overcast, just down the middle. But the last, if you've got the depth across, I think it's better going that's across. That's what dictates. Isn't Covers it? better with depth. Yeah. If you've got less than two and a half foot. There's okay. a lot of snake lakes now, you haven't got the depth anymore, have you? No, Especially and that makes shallow fishing trout. not good across though. Yeah, that's yeah. when you have to come in the middle, doesn't it? Could like them reeds and what have you, don't you? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, we can talk about that more when you fish, but um so yeah, so shotting wise, you know, you can see there's four number tens there, again, little babby two inch up length. Uh and other than that, obviously 
inline dibber, four number tens, but you know, four twelve, four fourteens, it's one of them. I, don't, I can't see it making that much of a difference. Mm. Uh, and that's it, that's the fundamentals of that one. So when you're missing bites, go into this one, you'll have a run of fish, but then they'll wise up and you won't get bites again. So that's when you'd potentially go a little bit deeper, but I guarantee you go back to that rig and you start getting bites again. Oh yeah, 10 it's times nuts. more bites in it. That, that's what kills me off with shallow fishing. You put a section rig on, it goes under every single go and you miss loads of them if little things aren't right that we're yeah. going to talk about. And then you put that rig on and you think, right, that'll fix them. And you put it in, your heavy overshotted short latch rig. That, that's something you've got to say about that dibber as well. Which what? This one? That dibber in, unless you change to something else that we're going to show you in a minute. Yeah. That rig is 100% fish with minimal lash length. It, yes. Always, you never have Definitely. a long lash on that unless you do things with back shot that I'm going to show you in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, this is always at the limit. I mean, obviously, if there's no limit, you know, that floats up there somewhere. Yeah, just so the fish if there's no limit, themselves. I'd have that an inch, two yeah, inches away. Definitely. Because the float is nearly It's worth relevant. mentioning that, isn't it, about our limits. Obviously, a lot of fish you'll go to, they do have limits, but where they don't, what we're saying is get that float right up there. Yeah. Because then the fish will come. And if there is a limit, flip and measure it. I'd go that far yeah, to that's where perfect. You have to watch it, get so, ruler yeah. out, measure four inch, measure six inch. I don't want it six inch I'll if I'm get, allowed yeah, for. Get your up length box out and just measure it against that, don't you? Yes. That's all I do. Definitely, definitely. Oh, Always worth also. doing. Cheeky. Right, so that's them ones. Now, next, obviously, a lot of fisheries ban it, but a lot of fisheries allow it, and that's the overshotting. Now, some fisheries will state you can overshot, but you must have a float on. Um, and that's where things like this come in. I don't know. It, I've not really done that much of it, Jay, so I'm not going to say whether floats make a difference or not, like the stem of it or the shape of it, because you're overshotting at the end of the day. Yeah. Have you done much of it? Not a lot with overshotting with floats, only when I have to. I mean, I'll, I'll, it's just one of them. Obviously, the venues we go, we just you'll see it in a minute, I don't have a float on, but where you've got to have a float on, like uh, Blundell's of the week, you had to have a float on, but you could overshot. Yeah. And this is like pretty much the, the rig you're using. It worked, worked fine. It depends on whether lash length is incorporated as well. Yeah. That that confuses and obviously things. that's where jigger comes into it, isn't it? Yeah, because if, if there's no lash length and you have to have a float on, I'd do that. Just put it right up. It's doesn't even exist. It? Yeah, let them pull it in. Do you know what yeah. That's what people do at Partridge. I've seen that a million times because no lash length is there is no lash length, is there? Mm. So you can use a, a rig yeah. and turn it into an overshotted rig by doing that with your float. Yeah. Not nice, not pretty, but very No, but it very, gets so done. So this, this gets um, over the fact then, folks, if you've got to have a float on, but you can overshot, it's this. So now, what is that? Subtly overshotted. This this is the bit that's changed for me loads over the years. Uh, and that's um, lighter shots. Rather than just putting a BB on or four or five number eights. Yeah, them days are gone. The difference is ridiculous now, folks. Honestly, you've got to put number 10s or even number 11s. I've been playing about with like three and four number 11s and that's making a difference. Yeah. You know what I mean? But 10s have been the best. Three or four number 10s. So all we've got three or four number 10s, stocks again, through the rig. Uh, and a little bit longer up length, three inch up length, but again, it wouldn't really make up. What are you doing eating shots? I'm going to show you something hungry? now that... Oh, no. don't do me head in, No, Jay. it's not going to do you head That oh, you've got that rig as well yeah. to make it stupidly overshotted. Like, sometimes an overshotted rig, if you've got to have a float on as well, the bottom bit's still sexy. You can maintain sexy fall, which you pretty much have there. Yeah. But to make it silly, you can sometimes do that. Yeah which makes it silly overshot at the top end, but you right, still but maintain still nice, nice down there. And yeah, that like helps that. keep this bit tight. Yeah, that is a big shot, that Jay, lad. Yeah, it's a big arm number three, that. But things like that, it's all about <laughs> red, the lad. whole emphasis on F1 shallow fishing. I'm going to use that. Yeah, that, that'll just go straight away. That, the whole emphasis basket. on shallow fishing for F1s yeah. is keeping this a tight bit. line, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's either you want a tight line to hook the bite. If you don't have one, you miss them. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, I won't go into that. But yeah, you do. You miss every single bite if you've not got a tight line if your hook bait is not tight to this yeah not even your float to this mm. then you miss a bite but the cleverer they get the more they get caught you have to have a sexy fall to, you've, to hook the you've fish you've got to but yeah and obviously i'm going to go through a way on on this other rig jay when we get going where your rig's basically not still for longer than two seconds well, that's, yeah you know what i mean and it's it's some Again, if you're allowed to tap, you've got to do it. And you'll see it, you'll be like, what is going on there? But it's, it's maddening at the difference it makes. Yeah, I, I don't like tapping, but the jigging about. So but, I think tapping, I think tapping's more effective for F1s than anything. It is, when it's right, it can also be the worst thing in the world. Spooking them. I think they come to the noise still, mate. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I've not done as much of it as you, obviously. I do like my shallow fishing, but... Mm. I just Every day's different with slapping. And, but anyway, they either want it or they hate it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It'll come between the two the movement is more important. I mean, some lads yeah. that are phenomenal at the shallow fishing, yeah. I mean, like a weeder and them at Partridge, yeah. it's movement. Yeah. 
that whether the fish want moving, don't move it. But you see with their rigs, they're never flipping still. And no. they honestly catch a massive percentage of the fish. I don't mean it in any nasty way, like by accident. You're, well, not, yeah. you're not seeing a bite, you're, yeah. you're hooking them. You don't even know the fish is... But you're through. moving your bait that much that you hook them. Yeah. Is that what you're going to go into? That's what I'm going to go into. Obviously, you do the similar thing with that one, which I'll show you. Uh, but then this rig, folks. So this is... Let's like move them shots back. The shots aren't in the right place, Jay. Uh, this is the one where, you know, you don't have to have a float on. Um, it's just... on a, It's just carnage. It, it makes such a difference. Now, the reason it makes a difference is when um, there's no resistance down the line. You're tapping your, your pole tip and it's that sharp lift up, sort of six or eight inches, sharp lift up, mm. then as you're dropping the rig back down, I'm just get, me, get the hook out of there. Basically, what's happening, when you're dropping, yeah! So you're lifting that rig up, and as you're dropping it back down, it's falling so natural. Fish takes it, but by the time it's, take, it's taken the bait and gone to spit it out, you're striking again. Yeah. And you're. that's, that's like, like you're saying, by accident, that's when you're catching them. Yeah. And they're the great big F1s. It's going these. back to that thing, what I said about me maggot sinking and them eating it. Yeah. The only way I'd catch them is striking as I, do you know what I mean? You almost, Forget about watching me fly. Yeah, you don't see, yeah. One's at that's it. That's it. And if you do that 10 times, one of them 10 times, you're going to hook a fish. Yeah. Which if you're doing it every 10 seconds, take that. Yeah. Isn't it? Every, 100%. Every 100 seconds you're and nailing a three pound F1. Hopefully we'll be able to show you in real time, obviously the difference between, you know, the rigs, the float rigs, and then using something like this where it's allowed. So it's not allowed on most waters, obviously you've got to have float on, but it's pre pretty much similar to the, the one with the float on that's overshotted. It's but no how difference. simple does it get? Yeah, it's exactly no the same, all, it? it? Just, yeah, it's nice. You can bodge them up in about three seconds. Yeah. I mean, my party rigs, yeah, I've got basically six of these from like eight inches down to two foot and that's it, done. Yeah. And it's, it's one of them, obviously, you, you go to win, that's the only way you'll win at venues like that. Yeah, where they're proper often, educated. The, the only thing you miss out on them is why you need your first rig that you showed us. Yes. Is your find the outie rig, because you you're very much blind with them. And it, oh, oh, yeah. we'll, we'll go through that, actually. When, when, when we start getting fishing, you'll see we'll have, like, you know, maybe a minute. I don't think we'll go a minute without a fish, but we'll go for a minute without a fish, put the float rig back on through the water, and you get a bite straight yeah, away. Yeah, you see how many are present, can't it's you? It's ridiculous. Quick go. Get your confidence and you can see whereabouts they are in your peg your yeah. depth finder sort yeah, of thing yeah, yeah put that on and have proper runs in it that's what shallow fishing's definitely come that way over the years as well hasn't it like 10 it years ago when we oh, it's all about spells now mm. whereas it used to be flipping heck we'd get on that rig and not come off it it'd just be like three or four hour carnage oh my it? god how when they used but to be I, stupid I, th I think that's more to do with obviously anglers like that they're getting used to it and everyone's competing for them the same, fish the same in. way in it yeah, yeah. definitely we, we've absolutely up. they don't get away with it anymore no whereas they used to Oh, it used to be so easy to catch them. It was they? amazing, wasn't it? But now, but now it's we're all just saying sort of like, yeah, right, Richard, he's one of those, like. Uh, but now we're getting like 15, 20 minute spells, and then obviously you've got to keep other swims on the go. Then you go back to it, have another spell, and then it's one of them, isn't it? Yeah. Amazing. Definitely, I like that. So is your rig then, Jay? So we've got, there's I'm another one. Go that. He's going to do me head in, Jay's now. No, it's not even doing your head in. And this is just another ela elaboration. The variation. Variation, variation, that one. Lot, yeah. Of okay. everything. It's everything combined, in it? It's yeah. always thinking about, and it's. I think it's a lot to do with the weather that we've had and things like that. Because we've had lots of still days and the fish are sick of getting caught. We've been talking about line length a lot. Yes. And we're all obsessed yeah, yeah. with as little lines as possible. And again, Partridge is probably the place it's come from. If it's not, in fact, I'm going to say Westwood. Oh, right, okay. That, that the shallow type of venues that Peacock's yeah, yeah. on one today um, is where it's come from. And increasing the length of line between your float and the pole, which creates three million problems with missing bites, but it gets you more bites. It's definitely become a big thing. Right, okay. Having good. that pole tip away from the fish yeah. has been huge and a massively popular thing. It just thing. goes against everything that you know about F1 shallow fishing, doesn't it? But well, suppose, sort of, isn't it? Yeah. And it's been this sort of rig when fishing maggot shallow, not too deep. Yeah. When they're, when they're up in the top like 12, 14 inches or even less. I mean, six and bloody four inches in some cases. Right, okay. Fishing with lovely little dibbers yeah, yeah, yeah. that go in nice, they still sink quite nice. Yeah but they have all the properties of being a nightmare for hooking bites. Yes. Yeah, absolute yeah, yeah. pain in the arse. Yeah. You know, if that, that were to be a normal length of line with no shot on it, oh, you just... I'd probably never hook a fish. <laughs> like you might not, might yeah. you? Out of a hundred, you might catch three. <laughs> might catch a row. Yeah, you would, innit? <laughs> yeah, or yeah. the stupid one that put, yeah. but anyway. Yeah, chub that would hang itself. But by using massively right, okay. so heavy we've got back three shot number floats. Eights. Oh, right, okay. In that case it is, but it's whatever it is to hold that tight. And right. we'll show this in use in a minute. You're gonna have a dabble with this in a bit. And this is all about being able to use a sexy light rig, yeah. but keep my pole away from the buggers because mm. they hate it when they're fishing really, when they're feeding really, really high. 
So it's more of a plop than uh, the slap, because that's something else you mentioned as well, wasn't it, about the slap? You think the fish are wising up to the slap? Yeah, talk about that when we're playing. I like that. When we have a fish, in the next video, we'll show you all that sort of thing. Yeah. But by using this style of rig instead, where I can just plop it in, Yeah. Yeah. but then I've got to be very clever and a bit of practice at holding it tight, not mm. letting that back shot sink it. As you can see there, when I hold that tight, and you know I mean, I may even have that back shot stupidly close on days and bring it all here. And as long as I can hold me, me pole nice and tight. See how in between me pole tip and that last back shot's dead straight, dead tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it means that as soon as a fish moves it, it's on the bead. Yeah. Yeah, like but that. I've got that lovely thing. Do you know what I mean? It's no different to put the tiny lash on. Mm. But a back shot are doing the same job. But again, the fish are getting used to pole tips and things it's like just, that. Yeah, a bit more sexy. And I love this rig in that it's more versatile because if I want to go deeper, I can just add three or four inches onto it, move me back shots. And I'm good to go again. And potentially, because you've not got the little bolt there, you could use that as a potential mugging mix, should you see one or something. Yeah, you bodge yeah. that. You that could I mean? be anything, can't it? Yeah. But yeah, I'm starting to like him. Still got a lot to learn about this sort of rig, but it definitely has a huge place in that in rig staying fishing. on my top kit, Jay lad. You know yeah, that, don't I thought you? it might. Cheers, anyway, mate. right. So there's the riggy bit. Next, so we're gonna catch some fishes. Yeah, we're gonna do a separate video though, because we've got that much to talk about. You'll have to catch up with the fishing video in a little bit. <laughs> 